Weight loss is not just about eating fewer calories until you reach your goal weight. To lose weight and keep it off, you need to decrease your long-term calorie intake to match the maintenance calories of your goal weight. If you diet and afterwards go back to your previous eating habits, you will also go back to your old weight plus more. But if you figure out how to fit a healthy and satisfying day of eating into the maintenance calories of your goal weight, you will lose weight easily and also keep it off long term. Well, how do you do that? An often undervalued aspect of weight management is the concept of calorie density, how many calories there are in a certain mass or volume of food. In this video, we will study the concept of calorie density and present the most effective changes in dietary habits for you to implement in your weight loss strategy. Maintenance calories We all burn a certain number of calories each day, of which about 60% are burned just by living and breathing, and just about 15% by movement and exercise. The number of calories you burn any given day are called maintenance calories. If you eat more calories, you gain weight. If you eat fewer calories, you lose weight. As you gain or lose weight, your maintenance calories increase or decrease accordingly because of the change in body weight. Your long-term weight is determined by your long-term calorie intake. If you start eating the maintenance calories of your goal weight, you will reach that weight eventually. In practice, it is not necessary to exactly know the maintenance calories of your goal weight. If you reach a weight loss plateau far above your goal weight, you know that more changes in dietary habits are necessary. Weight loss strategy Now we know that the diet we eat during weight loss is pretty much the same diet we eat for weight maintenance. Our weight loss diet might be a bit more strict in the last phase of our weight loss, losing those last 10 pounds, simply to speed up the process. Also, if the difference between our current weight and goal weight is too big, we might need to take a step-by-step -step approach. Still, we need to figure out how to fit a healthy and satisfying day of eating into the maintenance calories of our goal weight as an immediate or at least long-term goal. But what does healthy and satisfying mean, really? Healthy and satisfying The first parameter we have is the number of calories, the maintenance calories of our goal weight. The second parameter is the amount of food we want to eat, which is an important aspect of our diet being satisfying. We don't want to go to bed hungry, right? In fact, we should never do that. A good target is about 1.4 kilograms, about 3 pounds of food a day. Even up to 2 kilograms, up to 4.5 pounds of food is possible. The concept of calorie density will be very helpful here, as it is a direct result of matching the first parameter, the number of calories, with the second, the amount of food to eat. If we know both parameters and calculate the average calorie density of our day of eating, we know which foods to choose to lose weight and stay satisfied. Other important aspects of our diet concerning health and satisfaction include covering all essential nutrients, getting lots of fiber, health-promoting antioxidants and phytonutrients, and avoiding or limiting harmful substances. Calorie density chart. Let's take a look at two examples. The maintenance calories of her goal weight are about 1,800 calories and she wants to eat about 3 pounds of food. The maintenance calories of his goal weight are about 2,400 calories and he wants to eat 4 pounds of food, because he can. For both, the average calorie density of their food needs to be about 130 calories in 100 grams. So what does this mean? Well, if most of what you eat has a calorie density above 130 calories in 100 grams, you are going to have a hard time to fit the amount of food you want to eat in your calorie goal. At the end of your calories, there is still food you would like to eat. Here are some examples of different food groups and their calorie densities. Non-starchy vegetables, 30 calories per 100 grams. Fruits, 50 calories per 100 grams. Starchy vegetables, 70 calories per 100 grams. Intact grains and legumes, 120 calories per 100 grams. Eggs, 150 calories in 100 grams. Unprocessed meat, 200 calories in 100 grams. Bread, 250 calories in 100 grams. Most processed foods and sweets, 300 calories in 100 grams. Cheese, 
400 calories in 100 grams. Nuts and seeds, 600 calories in 100 grams. Butter, 700 calories in 100 grams. Oil, 900 calories in 100 grams. Most liquid calories can be thought to be around 400 calories per 100 grams. Let's say you want to eat 2000 calories and 1.5 kilograms of food. If you use 5 tablespoons of oil in your meals, you use up 25% of your calorie goal just for that and only 5% of your amount of food goal with next to no volume eaten. Add in 100 grams of cheese for another 20% of calories and 7% of total food with little volume. Add in 200 grams of processed foods or sweets for another 30% of calories and 13% of total food with little volume. With about 375 grams of food, 25% of what you want to eat in a day, you have just used up 1500 calories, 75% of your daily calories. This might sound like an extreme example, but it is not that far off for many people on standard western dietary patterns. If we continue with our calculation, we need to fit more than 1 kilogram of food into those last 500 calories. The average calorie density of these foods needs to be about 50 calories in 100 grams. Effectively, just fruits and vegetables. We can see that this is not a reasonable approach and will likely result in a calorie surplus and weight gain. Eating that much oil, cheese and processed foods makes it nearly impossible to stick to your calorie goal and the amount of food you need to eat to stay satisfied. Starting from a western dietary pattern high in added fats, added sugar and animal products, we can look back at the calorie density chart to see how effective different dietary changes are. The most effective dietary changes include cutting out oil, cutting out butter, cutting out cheese, cutting out processed foods, cutting out liquid calories, eating lots of non-starchy vegetables, eating lots of fruits. Very effective dietary changes include limiting oil, limiting butter, limiting cheese, limiting processed foods, limiting liquid calories, cutting out bread, cutting out unprocessed meat, eating more starchy vegetables. Effective dietary changes include limiting bread, limiting unprocessed meat, eating more intact grains and legumes. And counterproductive would be cutting out or limiting starchy vegetables, intact grains and legumes in fear of carbohydrates. Remember to subscribe to our channel. On the spectrum. You don't need to implement all of the most effective dietary changes for successful and long-term weight loss. If you don't want to give up oil right away, just try to use less. If you don't want to cut out bread, limit it. You can also only go for adding more food without actively limiting any of your favorite foods. More non-starchy vegetables, fruits, starchy vegetables, intact grains and legumes will automatically crowd out some of the higher calorie dense foods without a sense of deprivation. Even though these dietary changes are geared towards weight loss, they are also set out to improve your health. Eating less added fat, less added sugar and fewer animal products, as well as eating more whole plant foods, is a great way to improve your gut health, arterial health and overall well-being. Beyond calories The information on food labels is not very accurate. There are many factors that affect how many calories you really absorb from the food you eat. 100 calories from carrots are very different from 100 calories from soft drinks. One example is resistant starch in legumes. It is counted as calories but is not absorbed in the small intestine. Therefore legumes effectively have about 20% fewer calories than what's written on the label. Similar to this, loosely chewed whole nuts have about 30% fewer calories than the same amount of nut butter. Green leafy vegetables can inhibit fat absorption. Every calorie you eat counts about 10% less on a high fiber diet. Branched chain amino acids in animal protein can worsen your metabolism, which can decrease the number of calories you burn by about 10% and so forth. You can expect various weight loss and health benefits the more you move towards eating more whole plant foods. We hope this video will help you on your weight loss journey. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with someone who might benefit from it. See you next week!